What's up, Canada? I'm here with Johan Egg from Amora Bars. Yes. We're in Toronto, and uh, apparently it's been the uh, craziest night so far. The big crowd. I, I think so. I mean, uh, Toronto has always been good for us, but this was probably the best show for us in the city. Excellent. I mean, the huge crowd, awesome action on stage. Some people going everywhere, going fucking nuts. It's Sweet. amazing. Well, welcome back to Canada. Thank you. We spoke roughly a year ago when you yeah. guys came through town. Uh, how does it feel to be touring across North America again with Sounds of the Underground? It feels good, actually. I mean, uh, I know a lot of people were expecting us to come back and headline, but we decided to do this tour just to bump us up a notch and, and yeah. expose ourselves to some people who might not have heard or seen us before. Um, and then, you know, and I think it, so far it's been a good choice for us. I mean, as I said, it's. The, the tour has been going really well. We had yeah. good response to every show. So. Yeah. Well, we're about two, three weeks into the tour now. Uh, any crazy shit happen? You got any funny stories from previous <laughs> nights? Well, I mean, we spent a lot of time in the gay bar on Shadows Fall. <laughs> yeah, they, nice. they have the so-called gay bar, which is the front, front, front lounge, where they have like disco lights and all that shit and they even a smoke machine and they tell me like 80s discos. <laughs> it's fucking, it's you fucking guys are sick. just getting drunk there? <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's been cool. It's been, I mean, we, we had some really good times and, you know, hanging out with Testament in New Jersey, Ooh. for instance, was really cool Ooh. as well. I'm meeting, jealous meeting, now. Yeah, meeting uh, Chuck and Paul Bostoff. That's you know. very cool. So that, that, was, that was really cool. No, but otherwise, crazy stuff, you know, the bus has broken down like five times. No. Today, they broke down for the fifth time, and it was the transmission that went, so, you know. It's tour, it's the road, there's shit Yeah, happening. yeah, unfortunately, yes. I mean, we, we even missed the show because of breakdowns. Oh, that's, so that, that's That's bad, I mean, even if, if it was one of the smaller shows on this tour, tour so far, it, it, it's still bad, you know. You don't what want town was that? Uh, it was in North Carolina. Um, City. That's all right. I MC. Was, they yeah. will come and revisit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. We'll make it up. <laughs> nice. But this this tour this year has a lot of almost random bands on it. I mean, with Necro in the middle of the show, it seems a little yeah. bit different from the previous years. How do you find the crowds reacting to a little bit of uh, Viking influenced death metal? As I said, you know, every, every show it's it's been really good. You know, and it's like. Uh, I watched, I watched some of the other bands, and I would say that the bands that get the best reaction so far is probably uh, Gold War always has a good show, uh, Job for Cowboy, yeah. Chimera, Shadows Fall and Gore, but, so let's say, but of the opening bands, like, um, it's definitely us, Darkest Hour also has a good show. Uh, the one band that has had a tough time, and it's probably because they're so different, it's not, you know, yeah. uh, and you know, they had, they had a tough time, but they, they're, they're fighting every night. Yeah, they're fighting for their spot. Yeah. What do you feel about having that on the show? It, it's not really for me to say. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's it's like, I would say that maybe it's not really the right tour for them yeah. as such, but, you know, they're on the tour. And they seem to be cool guys. So. I thought they should be out with body count or something. That would probably have been a fucking amazing tour, yeah. I think. <laughs> well, we have to call them up and tell them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, September 22nd of 2006, last year, that's when With Odin on our side dropped and released. We're slowly pushing a year since it came out. How do you feel now about the record compared to when it first came out? I don't know, I still think it's the best one we ever did. I think it's the strongest songs. I told completely the strongest songs, even though maybe it, it doesn't really have the supreme hit of Fate of Morris with yeah. Pursuit of Vikings, but it's still a lot stronger album in my opinion. Uh, best production we ever did, and I still, actually still can you know, put it on every once in a while and actually listen to some of the songs. And yeah. I really enjoy it, and that's that's not really often I do that. I mean, normally I listen to the album the first couple of weeks, and then afterwards I don't really listen to it right. anymore unless, unless I have to, you know, freshen up on the lyrics or yeah. whatever. But yeah. Well, if you're playing it all the time and you're still popping it on, that's a good sign, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th I think it's a really good album. I'm really proud of it. As long as you are your own number one fan. <laughs> yeah. That's what's supposed to be. At least you have one, then. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to go out and buy, like, a million CDs. Yeah. Look how well we're doing. <laughs> 
So since since it's been roughly a year, do you guys already have uh, you know some new material on the go? Any progress with new music? No, we're we're not really working on anything. I mean, we we're still touring with this album and, and working with it. I mean, we did the tour tours afterwards in, in November, December, like the headline of Europe and the support tour of Autumn, back to line, uh, back to back in the, yeah. uh, here in the US. And, and uh, then we did like Scandinavian tour, UK tour. We did a show, a shows in Greece and Spain. And then we went doing festivals. And, and now we're doing this tour. And now we're going back to Europe to do a support tour for the Warrior. Yeah. And then we're coming back to do a headline tour in North America here. So cool. So I remember. I remember uh, when we spoke last time that you guys were saying like, we go home, we sit down, we write, and that's it. That's the only time we write. There are a lot of bands who are now like writing on tour, kind of as they go yeah. and whatnot. I like the fact that you guys will just literally focus on playing live, I mean, focus on touring, and okay. then write. The thing is like, the, the 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 way I feel that that we all kind of felt about it is like, we when we tour we get a lot of inspiration from listening to, to different bands and. Uh, and stuff like that, and, and really, you can get new ideas. Maybe not like in influences or like stuff. You can get new ideas. Like yeah. you could do something like this and this, and and when you go back home, those ideas have become a bit more. How do you say so? Like meaty. You know, you got you got some more to to go with when you come back home. Like some substance. Yeah, it's, it's got some substance to it. So so when you come back home. And you start to work with it, you have ideas how to go further. Yeah. You know? And uh, that's the way I felt we've always done it, the, the way that felt best for us. I know we tried in the past to do like uh, actually write songs on, on the road, but we ju we're just not focused enough to do yeah, that. Yeah, so. I understand. Too much beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, in March of this year, the world got to see the premiere of your video for Private Blackbirds. Yeah. It's your most recent video. Yes. How was uh, filming it, and who had control over the concept behind the video? Um, a little bit about it. Filming it was cold as fuck. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, it was. It was just terrible. You're not uh, used to the cold. Uh, well, yes, <laughs> but uh, we we're not used to spending like uh, ten hours outside in minus 14 degrees Celsius and uh, I mean even if we were not part of the actual uh, like action going on like in action uh, we still wanted to be there and make sure that everybody was you know who was involved in that yeah. game was having a good time and, and it actually you know it turned out really cool uh, the idea the fight the, the idea for the video like the, the screen plan everything was made by uh, Bill uh, the director, uh, who works for Astete, okay. and um, he uh, he came up with the the main plot for the for the speedplay, uh, and we just you know filled in on stuff that we thought maybe we could change yeah. or Details. do differently. But you know we pretty much gave, gave him free hands for it. Cool. And he had some really good ideas. And you like the uh, end result? I think it turned out really really good. Uh, we, uh, unfortunately, here in the U.S., they cut it a bit differently. Yes, yeah. it was a bit too brutal for MTV. I guess <laughs> a lot of things. Are, <laughs> whatever, you gotta dumb it down for North America, right? Well, maybe not dumb it down. You just had to shoot it code a little bit. Fair enough. <laughs> Make it more pleasant. Yeah. Touring, like you said before, you guys are uh, on the road all the time, and I was just double checking MySpace this morning before I came out, and I, I noticed that you guys literally have tours booked until November already. Yeah, yeah. A lot of which are in Europe. So I wanted yeah. to ask you, for you as a European-based band, uh, do you find that the crowd and the reaction and touring in Europe like to be a lot different than North America? Is it preferable? It's it's not preferable. I mean, it's 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 easier easier for us to tour Europe because it's our home continent. It's it's like we we feel at home. Of course, yeah. coming here to to the U.S., everything works a little bit different. The touring and everything, uh, especially if you're a support band. Yeah. Uh, and but I think that has a lot to do with if you're touring with an American band or an or a European, a European band as well, yeah. because the mentality is a little bit different from band to band. 
but um, you know, when it comes to like crowds and people and fans, I would say the mentality is the same. It's just the the, the way they express their feelings that is a bit different. Yeah. Cool. I, I have to be uh, nostalgic for one second here. I believe it's in October. You guys are playing a gig in Prague. Uh, yeah. yeah. Czech Republic. Well, I'm Czech. Originally, awesome. oh, yeah. I haven't been back in a couple of years, you know, and I would have loved to have been able to see the show there. But tell me about Prague. I mean, have you guys been to Czech Republic? Yeah, 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 we played Prague uh, a few times, I think. And we played Czech Republic uh, in general a couple of times. You like it? I, I love the city, I love the country. Best uh, beer? Awesome beer. <laughs> Seriously, I, I have a, the, the coolest story ever. We played on the border to Slovenia a couple years back. And, uh, we were staying at a countryside inn and we had like cabins and we came there in the middle of the night. Uh, we didn't really know where we were or like what the surroundings were. We just came there, got in the cabins, you know, uh, actually we, we had a little, little party in the morning. Okay. But the morning after we woke up and it was hot as hell. Just the sun was beating down on the cabin so there was no air conditioning, nothing. <laughs> and we just got out and, you know, said, all right, what do we do? Like we, we have... Um, like three hours until we were supposed to go to the venue. We're like, all right, let's go out and look at the town a little bit. Yeah. So we walk up to the road, look to the right, nothing. It's just fields and forest. <laughs> look to the left, nothing. Just fields and forest. Okay. So you know, you know what to do. You know. So we, we walk back and we notice that the main house has like an uh, outdoor area we can sit and drink beer. Right? So we go go there, sit down in the shade, because it's like 35 degrees Celsius in the shade. What's that? that that's like uh, 85. Yeah, that's just brutally hot. Yeah. In the shade too. Yeah. And we sit down, and the waiter comes out and says, right, what, 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 "What will you have?" And we say, "Yeah, all right, uh, like five large beers." All right. Comes back out after a while with five ice cold pilsner urquil. Nice. Uh, from tap. Yes. And it's like 50 krona, you know what krona is, Yeah, right? that's 50, 50 cents, yeah. Canadian, like, half a liter of beer. No, a, a, yeah, a, a, a 50 krona is like, a, you know, 15 Swedish crowns. It's, I think it's like a, a, it's two American dollars. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's what they were worth then, anyway. But yeah. we were like, what the fuck, you know, for five beers? Yeah. That's nothing. You can't go wrong with that. No. Uh, that was uh, that was really cool. That's a that's a good memory of Czech Republic. That's one of my favorite parts about Europe in general is that I mean in certain areas things are just inexpensive, but there's always an abundance of beer yeah, yeah, and yeah. literally everything. And good beer. Yeah, especially. Yeah. Oh, you're looking for your phone? Yes, did you find Side it? All right, uh, Sarah from Metal Blade found it, okay. and she was going to take it to Tony. Uh, there's some yeah, the production manager. So I I think uh, I think. Either she has it, then she's over. Oh, here, here she comes. I called my so, folks in Prague. So uh, nothing fun. serious. Just a few long distance <laughs> calls. All right. So speaking of beer, you got any preferences? What's the golden, the golden brew for you? Well, I, I, I like beer in general, but uh, like on a hot day, on a hot summer day, I would go for stout. Ah, oh, this guy's dropping the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, or uh, like that's the one I normally buy if I want like a, a good person or lager. Or yeah. Something. Uh, but, you know, depending on my mood, I would really also equally as much enjoy a, a British bitter yeah. ale. Yeah. Or even a stout, you know, a Guinness or a Murphy sort of thing. As long as it's beer and as long as it's cold. Yeah, well, I mean, Murphy's, it doesn't really have to be cold. So it's just, you know, Murphy's or, or Guinness should be like, not warm, but at least not ice cold because you, you want all the taste. You're a connoisseur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, well, I'm just going to wrap it up. I mean, we, we've already established the fact that you guys are going to be on tour like until the end of the year, probably. Other than constantly gigging, do you have anything else on the go? What, what else has come on in my no, that's, that's what we're focusing on right now. I mean, uh, after our headlining tour the, in December, in Korea, in America, we'll, uh, we'll go back home and maybe take some time off, and then we're going to see if we can start writing a new album. Time off around Christmas? Yeah, and the uh, New Year's small stuff. So. It's basically what you did last time. We yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty much the same thing, and, and hopefully we'll be able to record uh, like spring, summer next year. Cool.
worlds, worlds, Johan from Amon Amarth, uh, their music is basically like this guy. Huge, just a little bit scary, but it's fucking <laughs> awesome. So check it out if you haven't already. Fuck yeah.